Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you how to create an album cover using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.9.8. It's the development version of GIMP but also the most recent version. They're coming out with GIMP 2.10 here soon um, and it's going to contain most of the features found in uh, the version I'm using here, only this one has some bug fixes they're working on. But before I get started today, I just want to direct you guys over to my website, daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. You can find video and text tutorials here. And actually, I do have a text version of this tutorial I'm working on today on our website, and I'll go ahead and include a link to that in the description. You can also enroll in our GIMP Udemy course, GIMP Photo Editing from Beginner to Pro Photo Retoucher, and I'll include that link in the description along with links to our social media. And today I'm going to be using some free images here from Pixabay. I have this one of a girl holding some flares, and then I have this photo here of a universe. So you can download both of these for free on Pixabay, and I'll put the links in the description as well. So here's the final product, and what we've done is we've got the image that you saw of the girl holding the flares. Uh, we've added a triangle here, and then we put the universe inside that triangle, and then we added uh, these lines outside here, and then we added a, a lens flare. So uh, we've done a lot of cool effects here, and then the fictitious name of this album is Ethereal. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do all this. So start by opening your image into GIMP. You can do that by going to File, Open, and then locate your file on your computer using the Open Image dialog box, and then go ahead and click to open it in, into GIMP. So once we've got this open in GIMP, I'm going to click on that main image layer here, and then come over here and hit the Duplicate icon, and that's going to duplicate our main image. And you can go ahead and rename this. I'll name this uh, Girl with Flare. And then this will be the girl with flare copy. And you can uh, click and drag this. It looks like I made a mistake there, but you can click and drag this to extend the width of the layers panel over here. All right, now that we have this copied onto another layer, we're going to come over here to colors, color temperature. And this is the Gaggle operation, which if you're not using the same version of GIMP that I'm using, uh, if you're using 2.8.22, you can come over to tools, Gaggle operation, that's going to bring up a drop down list of uh, these operations and just choose color temperature from there. So you should still have this even if you're using GIMP 2.8.22. And so now what I'm doing is I'm playing around with the original temperature of the image and then the intended temperature. Um, in this case, I'm kind of using this tool to manipulate uh, the look of the image so that it just looks a little bit darker. And so I'm going to put this around 9000 for the original temperature. And then for the intended, I'm going to put it around 5400. And that's just going to give this a cool look. And I mean that in terms of like more blues, more cooler colors versus yellows, warmer colors, things like that. So in uh, GIMP 2.9.8, I can hit the split view and I can preview. This is before we applied the effect. This is after. And uh, I can also move this, as you can see, so I can preview different parts of the image. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now you can see this is a lot cooler in terms of the colors. And I'll go ahead and hide that for now and click on my main girl with flare layer. And then come over to colors, hue saturation. And this is set to negative 100 right now, but I'm actually going to crank this up to about 36. And then I'm going to keep my lightness set to 0.6. And so now you can see this photo is a lot brighter. And I'll click OK. And then I'm going to come over to colors color balance and I'm just going to adjust the values here and I'm just trying to make this image look a little better and then I'll come over here to the shadows and do the same thing just go ahead and adjust the colors here And then I'll come over here to the highlights and go ahead and adjust these colors as well. And again, you can apply a split view here and see a before and after. And then once you're ready, hit OK. All right, so now we have uh, our main image edited here and we've brightened up the colors a little bit and adjusted the color balance. And that's going to play a factor a little bit later on in the tutorial. So now that we have our image color balanced, the next thing I want to do is add some guides in here so that we can 
create a triangle with equal sides or you know an equilateral triangle something similar to that and so to do that uh, as you can see the dimensions of this image are 1920 by 1295 which means the center of this image is going to be at 960 pixels I'm going to click and drag a guide from the left side here that's going to create a vertical guide and watch my numbers down here as I do that you'll see uh, we can click and drag this until that left number there tells us 960 and we'll drop it there and then the next thing we're going to do we need a guide on the left side here so I'm going to click and drag a guide from the left side and uh, place it around there grab my alignment tool make sure your tool options are open so this is the tool options tab right here and I'm going to change the offset X to 400 and then click on that guide you just created and then click distribute left edges of targets and that's going to place this guide 400 pixels from the left edge of this image here and by the way make sure that your relative to is set to image in order for that to work so again with uh, the align tool selected and relative to image set we're going to uh, change the offset here to negative 400 we're going to click and drag a guide over to the right side of our image. Make sure you click on that guide and then hit distribute right, of right edges of targets. And so that's going to place this guide 400 pixels from the right edge of this image here. And now we're going to draw a horizontal guide and we're going to just place this, we're going to eyeball it right above the left hand here, or I guess it's her right, our left, uh, the hand holding the teal uh, smoke flare. And then we're going to go ahead and click and drag one last one and we'll place this a little above her head and we'll just go ahead and place that right there. So now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name this triangle and you can go ahead and assign a color tag to this. I'll go ahead and assign purple to it. Uh, just make sure that the fill width is set to transparency. Click OK. And then you can go ahead and click and drag that to the top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my free select tool and make sure that the mode is set to replace the current selection and you can go ahead and draw the points on your triangle here and you're just clicking uh, where these guides intersect and then you want to go ahead and make sure your last one is connected there and so now what I'm going to do is I need to fill this in with the color um, so when we click on the bucket fill tool this is going to turn into a selection area then we're going to grab our um, foreground here. I just double clicked on the foreground. I'm going to grab the bucket fill tool and go ahead and choose a pink that's within this flare here and click OK. And then go ahead and make sure you're on your triangle layer and fill that triangle in with that pink we just selected. So now we're going to keep the selection area here and we're going to go to select shrink and we're going to shrink this by 50 pixels. If you don't have this set to pixels over here, just click on this to change the unit. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And now this area has shrunk by 50 pixels. I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is come over to our universe photo and go to edit copy. Then we'll come back to our main composition here and hit control V or go to edit paste. And that's gonna paste this photo as a floating selection. Go ahead and click on it and then click to create a new layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click on this and name this universe just to clean up that title a little bit. Come over to your triangle layer and go to layer, transparency, alpha to selection, and that's gonna create a triangle uh, selection area here. Click on your universe photo. You can position this if you want to, you know, change where the different parts in the galaxy show on this triangle uh, using the move tool, and you can just click and move this around, uh, but it's fine where it is for me, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm on my universe layer and go to select invert and that's going to select everything outside the triangle and I'll just go ahead and hit the delete key and then go to select none and now we have the universe within the triangle here so the next thing I'm going to do is click on that universe layer and change the mode to overlay and then I'm going to with that universe layer still selected go ahead and decrease the opacity to around 65 and then I'm going to click on my triangle layer and I'm also going to decrease the opacity of this because I just want that universe layer to have, you know, a hint of that pink color in it. And so that looks good there. And the next thing I'm going to do is add a line nova to this composition. And that's a filter here in GIMP. And so I'm going to start with that by coming over here and clicking to create a new layer. And then I'll just name this line nova. 
and you can go ahead and assign a color tag to this. I'll assign a green color tag and make sure it's filled with transparency and click OK. And you can come over here to one of your previously created layers, right click on it, go to color tag, and then you can go ahead and add a color tag to this as well. So now both of these have the same color tag. And that's something you can only do in GIMP 2.9.8. So come back over here to our Line Nova layer and go to Filters, Render, Line Nova. And we're gonna go ahead and change this to 100 for the number of lines. And then for randomness, we're gonna set that to 10. And then I'm gonna click OK. And what this is gonna do is generate that Line Nova and it's gonna use the current color we have selected for the foreground color. So keep that in mind. All right, so now we have our Line Nova here, but Obviously, uh, this is covering up a lot of our image and uh, it's not quite the look we want. So what I'm gonna do is you can go ahead and select your triangle and go to Layer, Transparency, Alpha to Selection. That's gonna select inside the triangle. Come over to your Line Nova layer, right click and go to Add Layer Mask. And under Initialize Layer Mask 2, you're gonna select White and click Add. Um, and you can also erase, uh, use the eraser tool and just erase inside the triangle, but this is non-destructive editing, which means if we screw up, we can paint stuff back uh, using the layer mask. And so I'm gonna choose black as my foreground color for our uh, brush tool here. And I'm increasing the size of the brush using the brackets on my keyboard. You can also use the size slider over here. And just go ahead and start painting that black inside the triangle and that's going to erase the line nova inside the triangle there. And then I'm gonna to go to select, invert, and that's gonna select everything outside the triangle. And what I'm doing now is painting inside the triangle. So I'm leaving everything that's outside here, uh, but I'm painting everything inside this triangle because I don't want any of the line nova inside here. And again, if you accidentally erase too much like that, you can just come over here, change your color to white, and you can just paint that back in. So keep that in mind. But uh, that looks good to me, so I'm gonna go to Select None. And now everything inside the triangle has been erased. So what I wanna do next is with my brush tool still selected, and I'll change this back to black, uh, I do wanna come over here, and I'll actually grab my Zoom tool first, zoom in a little bit, grab that brush tool again and decrease the size of this brush. I'm going to delete the parts of the line Nova that overlap uh, with my subject's arms, hands, and the flares that she's holding. And to make this easier, I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the opacity of our line Nova layer. Make sure you're clicked on the layer itself and not the layer mask. So I'll decrease that a little bit and then click back onto that layer mask to uh, continue deleting some of this. And then I'm going to come over here to my other hand and do the same thing. And then you can go ahead and increase this opacity again to see how you did on erasing uh, parts of the line over here. And you can click on that layer mask again if you missed any parts, any details. All right, once you've done that, go ahead and click on your Line Nova layer and decrease the opacity. I'm gonna go all the way down to about six here. And we'll go ahead and leave it at that. So I'll grab my zoom tool, hold control, and zoom out. You can also press Z on your keyboard to select the zoom tool. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click on my triangle layer and I will right click and go to Add Layer Mask and set Initialize Layer Mask to White Full Opacity and click Add. And then I'm going to grab my Zoom tool, go ahead and zoom in here. And what I'm going to do is grab my brush again, make sure it's set to black, and I'm gonna paint around the uh, edges of her head here, wherever she intersects with this triangle so that it looks like she's kind of popping out of this triangle. And you are going to have to uh, do this to two layers here. So we've got the first layer, which is the main triangle layer. And then we're going to also have to perform this action on the universe layer. And you can see that I've kind of erased too much right here. And I'm going to fix that by switching over to white here in a second and painting that back in. So go ahead and uh, choose white here. Grab my zoom tool and zoom in closer on some of these finer details. 
and then grab my paintbrush again and use the bracket keys and just paint some of this back in. And then I'll switch back over to a black and go ahead and paint some of this out. And you can also change your brush to a softer brush over here. Uh, this is now set to 25 and that'll basically feather the edges of your brush while you paint. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paint this triangle layer where her arm intersects with it. Um, that way it looks like her arm is kind of popping out of here. And then I'm going to come over here to the other arm and do the same thing. And I'm also going to paint over this uh, flare here. And then I'm going to come back over here to this arm. And the last thing I want to do is paint over this flare and then paint over the smoke here so it looks like the smoke is kind of pouring over this triangle. And then to further enhance the 3D effect, uh, you can paint some of the smoke here so that it looks like this smoke is uh, in front of the triangle and then the rest of the smoke is behind the triangle. So it'll kind of add depth to the image and make it appear as if the uh, smoke is working its way back through the triangle. All right, so now what we want to do, we can go ahead and zoom out. And as I stated, we do have another layer that we have to do this for, which is the um, universe layer. But what we can do is go ahead and click on our layer mask here, right click on it, and go to mask to selection. And then we can come over here to our universe layer, right click on it, and go to add layer mask and then click selection and click add and what that did is it took our selection area and went ahead and applied it to its own layer mask here on this universe layer so it essentially duplicated that layer mask we just did. So now you can go to select none and you'll see now that uh, all those parts with the universe layer are deleted and now it looks like this girl is popping out of the triangle here. So go ahead and zoom out a little bit more here. I'm going to go ahead and go to view and click show guides and that's just going to hide our guides for now. And the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and unhide this top uh, girl with flare layer and go ahead and right click on it and go to add layer mask and set this to uh, initialize layer mask to white full opacity and click add. And then go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab her brush and we're going to paint in the brighter parts for her skin here and then also for the color of the smoke. So remember that below this image is a brighter image. And so by painting over her face, we're bringing in these skin tones, these bright skin tones here. And we're also going to do this for her hair and these earrings that she's wearing. And I'm just decreasing the brush with my bracket keys while I work. And then we can go ahead and paint on the arms here as well, same thing. And I do still have the guides in here, so uh, basically what's happening while I draw is it's uh, snapping to those guides. And so I can come over here to view and hit snap to guides, and that's going to keep that from happening. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and paint this layer mask over the flare, and that's going to... Uh, really enhance the colors of the flares here.
And then I'm going to come over here to the blue flare and do the same thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab our zoom tool and zoom out. And now you can see that her skin tone and the earrings she's wearing and the flares all now are enhanced and we can actually come down here as well and uh, color in this necklace that she's wearing. And I'll go ahead and zoom out and the more time you spend um, you know with the details obviously the better this is going to look. So once I finish with that portion I'm going to come over here to that same layer and go ahead and click on the main layer versus the layer mask. So click on that main layer and then come over here to filters, light and shadow, lens flare. And that's gonna go ahead and generate a lens flare on the screen here. Personal preference, I want the lens flare up here. So what I can do, I'll go ahead and adjust my X and Y. The Y is gonna bring this up and the X is gonna bring it over. So go ahead and adjust the Y. And then you can see as I decrease the Y, the lens flare increases in position. And I'm just gonna move this over a little bit here. And that works for me, so I'll go ahead and click OK. And now we have a lens flare up here. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and crop this because the standard album cover size is gonna be 4.724 by 4.724 inches. So I'll grab my crop tool check fixed here, and that is the same as a one-to-one -one fixed aspect ratio. Um, so I'll go ahead and draw this, and that's gonna give us the square shape here. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to center this, and we can actually come back up to view, show guides, and get that center guide back here, and that's gonna help us align this to the center. And it's okay if the lens flare gets a little cut off here. And go ahead and double click, and that'll apply the crop. Then we can go to view, show guides again to hide those guides. And the last thing I'm gonna do is add our text down here. So I have this set to Proxima Nova for the font. You can click on here to choose your font. And then I have the size set to 65. And I'm gonna click down here and with the caps lock key on, go ahead and type our fictitious album name, which is Ethereal. And then I'm gonna click and drag that to the top. And go ahead and grab my move tool and just position this. So it's where I want it. And also quick note, uh, this was set to uh, 10 for the kerning um, or the letter spacing. So keep that in mind if you want yours to look the same as mine. And the last thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a new layer and I'm gonna name this gradient and we're gonna draw a gradient and my caps lock still on. We're gonna draw a gradient on top of this and I'll just choose a yellow color tag and go ahead and drag this to the top here, but underneath the text. And then I've already got my pink color still here, and I'm gonna change the foreground color to the teal color right here, and click OK. And then grab the gradient tool, and I have this set to foreground to background, and the shape is set to linear. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click in the top corner of our composition here, our canvas, and drag it to the bottom right corner. And again, in uh, GIM 2.9.8, you can live edit this gradient so you can change where the gradient starts and ends, uh, you know, where the colors begin to blend, or you could change the colors themselves, or you can change uh, any settings about the gradient. But once you've got the gradient how you want it, go ahead and click the Move tool and that'll apply the gradient. And then I'm going to click on that gradient layer and come over to Soft Light as the mode. And you can go ahead and decrease uh, the opacity of this if you want to uh, lessen the effects. And the last thing I'm gonna do is click on the uh, main girl with flare layer here and then go to filters, enhance, unsharp mask, and that's just gonna sharpen her up a little bit. I'll click okay and then go ahead and repeat it for that background layer, uh, which is kind of optional because it doesn't really show up that well, but Okay, so I did mention that this is going to be 4.724 by 4.724. So keep in mind, you may have to scale this. So you can go to Image, Scale Image, and come over here and choose Inches. 
And this one's a little under that, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change that to 4.724. And uh, GIMP may round down for you. Um, that's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can go up a little bit if you want to just be a little bit over. Make sure that the X and Y resolution are still set to 300 DPI and the interpolation set to cubic. And go ahead and click scale. All right, so that went ahead and scaled our image and I can grab our zoom tool, hold control and zoom out. And uh, now we have our final composition here and it is the uh, same size as a standard album cover, 4.724 by 4.724 inches, or in GIMP's case, it did kind of round a little bit. Uh, but all right, once you've done that, you can go ahead and go to File, Export As, and you can set your the name of your file up here, and choose your file location. Come over here to Select File Type by Extension, and you can choose from any of the file types here. I'll just set this as a JPEG and hit Export. And I've already saved this, so I'll hit Replace. And I'm going to set the quality to 100 and click export. And there you go. So that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. And I'll include the links to the downloads for this tutorial as well as the link to our Udemy course and our social media in the description of this video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.